Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be making a simple unit selection system for Unity's Entity Component System. Of course with Unity ECS, which is part of their Data Oriented Technology Stack or DOTS, it allows us to make games where we have you know, very high entity counts. So this really lends itself well towards things like real-time strategy games or city builder type games where we might want to be selecting individual units. So in today's video, we're gonna be making just a single unit selection system. So what this means is if the player's mouse is hovering over a selectable unit and they press the mouse button, then it's basically going to select that particular unit. If they were to click off that unit or click on another one, it's going to deselect the original unit and then select the new one. And also if you're holding down the shift key, you can add to your selection so we can have kind of multiple units selected at once. Now in the next video, we're going to expand on this a little bit and we're gonna be making basically a drag to select system so we can um, you know, select a, an area of units. However, in this one, we're just going to be focusing on the one where we select units one at a time. So anyways, if you do find today's video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their Data Oriented Technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. Okay, so the basic idea of this selection system is that the units that can be selected, they're just going to have a selectable unit tag. A tag in Unity ECS is basically just an empty data component. I made a whole video on them if you want to learn more about how they work. Then when the player clicks the mouse button, we're gonna be using the dots physics system to do a ray cast from the camera to the world through basically the mouse position. So it's going to cast a ray, you know, onto the screen wherever the player's mouse is on the screen. Then if it hits a collider and that collider belongs to an entity with the selectable unit tag, we're basically going to add a selected tag to that entity. Now with that selected tag, then we can kind of, you know, query for it in future systems if we need to. However, in this particular case, we're also going to be um, using something known as a system state component. And the system state component is basically going to spawn a selection ring into the world. And then so we can kind of have a visual indication that that particular entity has been selected. I'm not going to be going too deep into how I have that system state component set up because I did do a full in-depth video on those and this is basically set up the same way as that. So again, I will leave a link up in the card as well as in the description below to that video so you can reference it for more information. All right, so let's get into a little bit about the project setup. So one important thing to note is that I'm actually using uh, Unity's Universal Render Pipeline or URP for this project because I am using a shader made with shader graph to basically create that selection ring. And I've also upgraded the project to the hybrid renderer version two, which does require uh, use of the universal render pipeline. I see here, this is the custom shader that I've created with shader graph to make this kind of selection ring. Basically it's a shader that's attached to a cube. You'll see that um, we kind of have this outline of a cube here and this shader is basically projected onto any surface that it intersects with. So you'll see that if we move the cube up when it's no longer intersecting with the ground, then it's actually not going to be projecting that uh, shader onto the ground. Of course, we can you know move it around and you'll see that the selection ring kind of continues to move around. Now in the newer versions of the universal render pipeline, there is something built in called decals, which basically does this for you. Uh, so we don't have to use this custom shader from shader graph. By the way, I did not create this shader myself. I did reference a tutorial for this. I will leave a link to the tutorial that I followed down below because I think it is a really good tutorial. Then to actually spawn those selection rings into the world, you'll see that I have the selection controller, which is being converted to an entity. And we just have this selection UI prefab authoring script, which just has an entity value for the selection ring. Then finally, I did just wanna point out a couple things on these selectable units here. You see that these are of course being converted to entities as well. And see that they do have this selectable unit tag. So this selectable unit tag, again, is the tag that specifies that this unit can be selected within our game. Um, so this is important to have. Then the next component we have on there is a dynamic physics body component. This is basically the equivalent of a rigid body in regular Unity programming, and it's currently set to a motion type of dynamic. So it's basically going to be a dynamic physics body within our world. Now we actually don't need the physics body component for this particular uh, Raycast selection system. It will work perfectly fine without it. However, we will need the physics body component when we move over to our multi-selection system where we can kind of drag to select.
select entities. And most often your units are going to have a dynamic physics body on them anyways. So I just want to point that out. And then finally, the last thing that this absolutely needs is a physics shape. You'll see that it's currently set to a shape type of capsule because these are just capsules within our world. And this is basically the equivalent of a collider. Now, a couple important things is we need to go down to the collision filter and you see that there's the belongs to and collides with. So collides with is basically just set to everything right now. And then you'll see that I've created a couple of these custom groups here. So I have one for selection, which is going to basically be what our ray cast belongs with. I have a ground layer, of course, with the ground plane is set to. And then I also have a units layer. Now, if you don't have these set up, which by default you won't, you can just go to the edit physics category names and it will open up this asset right here and you can just put in whatever your custom physics layers are going to be. Now I've also gone ahead and created a custom enum called collision layers and I do have the flags attribute on it as well. Basically this just allows us an easy way to reference these particular layers without having to remember the specific integer associated with each layer. Uh, we will need this when we set up our collision filter so when we raycast the proper layers here. Okay so let's go ahead and start creating our unit selection system. Of course, it's going to be inheriting from system base. And I did also include the always update system attribute. We're going to need that in this case because if we don't have that, sometimes the system doesn't run in some kind of weird edge cases. So it's just important that we have that so everything will just always run as normal. So first we have a couple variables to get set. So first we're just going to need a reference to the main camera so we can do our ray casts from our main camera. Then we will need references to the build physics world as well as the collision world. And these are going to be important because we are going to be using the new Unity Dots physics to do our ray cast. Then inside on create, we can get our variables all set. So of course the main camera, we can set that equal to camera.main. And we'll also set up our build physics world and we'll set this equal to world.get or create system with a type of build physics world. Now we're actually not going to get our collision world inside on create because we actually have to get our collision world basically every time that we do our ray cast, the reason is, is if uh, entities actually get added or removed, that basically breaks everything that's inside the collision world. So the, the build physics world we can get inside on create, and then our collision world, we actually get from the build physics world, but we do have to get that every single time we want to access anything off the collision world. So with that all set, let's go ahead and move into the on update method. And so again, we want to trigger this entity selection when our player clicks. Now we're actually going to be sending out this ray cast when our player releases the mouse button. That will become more important when we get to our multiple unit selection system, but it will still work here with our single unit selection system. So basically what will happen is, you know, if we hold down the mouse button, it's not going to send out the ray cast and select the unit. But once we release the mouse button, then it actually will send out that ray cast. So of course to do that, we'll just do a simple if input dot get mouse button up, passing in zero for the left mouse button. So we'll just go ahead and call a method called select single unit. Now inside select single unit, the first thing that we're going to want to do is get a reference to our collision world. We do that by getting our build physics world dot physics world dot collision world. Now we can set up our ray cast. So we'll do a var ray. We'll set this equal to main camera dot screen point to ray passing in our input dot mouse position. Now it should be noted because we are using the main cameras screen screen point to ray function. This is, you know, kind of the classic uh, Unity game object camera. This ray is actually going to be a Unity engine ray. It's not going to be a new dots Unity physics ray, but that's just fine for this scenario because we're actually not using the ray. We're just using some points off of the ray to create our ray cast with the dots physics. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we'll just create a variable called ray start and we'll set this equal to ray dot origin. We'll also create a var for ray end which is equal to ray.getPoint, and then it wants a distance along this ray. So in this case, we can just say set a value of 100, but of course this will be unique to your game. You just need to figure out, you know, what is the furthest distance away from the camera that you may need to select a unit, and then probably add a little bit more to that just to be safe. So before we call our ray cast, let's just go ahead and set this up. So this is going to be a private bool which we'll call raycast, which takes in a float three for the ray start, a float three for the ray end, and then an out raycast hit, which we can just call raycast hit. 
Now, important thing to note, this raycast hit must be the dots physics type of raycast hit. So you'll see up at the top, I just have uh, using raycast hit equals unity.physics.raycast hit. So that's not getting confused with the unity engine.raycast hit. So important distinction to make because this is where we get to the dots physics side of the raycast. Now, to actually perform the raycast in dots physics, it's pretty simple. We basically just need to set up what is known as a raycast input which basically just has the start and end position. And then using that, we can actually call a uh, collision world dot cast ray with that raycast input and we'll pass the data back to our raycast hit. So we can set up our raycast input variable. This will be equal to a new raycast input. We'll set start, of course, equal to ray start. We'll set end equal to ray end. Then the final thing that we'll need to set for our raycast input is the collision filter. Now the collision filter basically determines what collision layer a particular entity is a part of and collides with. So in this case, we'll set filter equal to a new collision filter. We'll say this belongs to we want it to belong to the selection layer. Now, the way we can actually do that is we can cast a uint, unsigned integer, to our collision layer's enum that I showed you how we set up earlier. And then we'll just do dot selection. So this is basically going to be a part of the selection layer. So in this case, we'll have our raycast collide with the ground as well as the units layer. So the way that we can actually do that is inside parentheses, we'll do the collision layers dot ground and then we'll do just a single pipe character with our collision layers dot units so this means that we can collide with either the ground or our units layer now just keep in mind this means that if we were to have some other objects or obstacles um, basically in between the camera and the unit we would basically be able to select our unit you know through that other object so again this just kind of depends on what your game and what you want your raycast to collide with and how your entities can be selected and then finally all we need to do to actually do our raycast is we'll say return collision world dots cast ray so it's you know basically the opposite of ray cast just passing in our raycast input and then we need the out for our raycast hit. And that is basically our raycast. Now we just need to actually call our raycast. So back in the select single unit, we can just say if raycast, passing in our ray start, our ray end, and we'll say an out var for our raycast hit. So basically this means that if our raycast did hit something, we'll actually go and get that hit entity. So this is basically the entity that our raycast hit Hit, which is equal to our build physics world dot physics world dot bodies and this is going to be at index for ray cast hit dot rigid body index and then we'll do a dot entity on that one so that's probably the most you know verbose part of this whole selection system here but basically you know we're just going on to the build physics world actually going to the physics world of it looking at the bodies which is a native array of these physics bodies and we can pass in our rigid body index that we hit here and then we're going to do a dot entity at the end to actually get the entity of it so you'll see that this var hit entity is of type entity now what we can do is we can say if entity manager dot has component so we want to check to see if this entity has the selectable unit tag we can just go ahead and pass in our hit entity here if that's the case we can just do an entity manager dot add component adding in the selected entity tag of course to that hit entity so of course this is going to add the selected entity tag to that entity that we have well selected so now we can query for entities that are selected and all that fun stuff. But real quickly, I just want to show off the way that we actually add the visual selection ring to our entity. Again, you can reference the video that I did on system state components for more information on how this is all set up. So you'll see that I've created this selection ring state data, which implements the I system state data component interface. And it just has a public entity for selection UI. So this is going to be an entity reference to that actual ring that we're going to be spawning into the world. So you'll see that we're updating this 
system after the unit selection system. And now here we're doing our entities dot for each function. So we do an entities dot with all. So we're looking for anything that has the selected entity tag, meaning the entity is selected and with none, meaning that it does not already have the selection ring state data component on it. We're just going to go ahead and first spawn the selection UI. We're going to go ahead and create a new selection state data component and we'll set the selection UI entity equal to our selection UI entity that we just spawned in the world. Then to the select id entity, the entity that has the selected entity tag, we're going to actually add the select ring state data component on it. And of course, set the value to the one that we just created. Then on the selection UI, we're going to add a parent component, meaning that this can be actually a child object of the selected entity. So that's where we set it right here. And then finally, we're just going to add a local to parent component and set that equal to float four by four dot zero. So that's basically just going to put it at the origin position of of our selected unit. So with that all set up, we can come back to Unity and enter play mode. You'll see that we can click on one of our you know, entities to select it. However, if we click off the entity or we click on other entities, it's just going to continue selecting these. There's no way we can actually deselect entities right now. Luckily, that's really easy to do. We'll just go ahead and create a new method called deselect units. Then inside here, we can do an entity manager dot remove component selected entity tag. And then we're going to pass in an entity query. So we're looking for anything that has the selected entity tag. So basically, all this means is anything that has a selected entity tag, just remove it. So this is going to deselect all units. And then also do real quickly want to show off the cleanup selection ring system. So in this case, we're actually looking for each entity that has a selection ring state data component, but it does not have the selected entity tag. So this happens in one of two cases. The first being, which is probably going to be the most common is when we deselect our entity, we're going to remove the selected entity tag, or if we have a selected entity and it gets destroyed. So we just kind of need to do this extra cleanup operation where we actually just destroy the selection UI entity. So again, this is really just a visual representation of the selection. And I would highly recommend going and watching my previous video that I made on system state components to get some more information on how these work. So we can go back to Unity, and if we click on an entity and then click off, you'll see that it gets deselected. If we click on an entity, Entity. And then another one, you'll see that the selection moves between these entities here. And then if we, you know, continue selecting the same already selected unit, nothing appears to be changing, even though it basically deselects it and then reselects it. Then finally, I just wanted to add in some extra functionality so we can kind of, you know, hold down shift to select multiple units. Now, this is extremely easy to do. Basically, all we need to do is check whether the left shift key is being held down. If it is not being held down, then we'll just deselect the units. If we are, then we won't call the deselect units and we'll just continue selecting units as normal. So it's really easy to do. We'll just say if not input dot get key and make sure that we do get key and not get key down. And then we'll do our key code dot left shift. You of course can add the right shift in there as well if you want to, but then we'll just call the deselect units method here. Now come back to unity and we see that we can still select units one at a time as normal. And we can of course click off of them to deselect. However, if we now hold down the left shift key, we can basically add to our selection. And then when we, you know, let go of this and we can, um, you know, click off the entity, you'll see that the selection uh, basically clears out. Um, so all the units get deselected. You know, same thing if we were to, you know, kind of select multiple ones of these and then just select one other unit, you'll see the selection just moves over to that one unit. All right, so that's just going to wrap up today's video. Again, this was just a single unit selection in Unity's entity component system. The next video in the series is going to be uh, basically a multiple unit selection. And, you know, we can use it with or without the single unit selection. It doesn't matter. But in that one, again, we're going to basically be making a way that we can kind of drag a selection area and select multiple units within an area. And that one's going to be a little bit more complex than this current one because we have to do a little bit of, uh, you know, physics and math stuff. So it's definitely some fun and interesting stuff. So definitely stay tuned to the channel for that video. Of course, if you did enjoy today's video and you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.